Today is a very exciting day because it is the first day of me working on my brand new Hermitcraft base. Scar has done a fantastic job of constructing everything for me. And now it's time for me to move in and actually start making my mark. In the previous episode, we formulated some plans. So we need to make a large scale bulk item sorter. We also want to make some form of large scale super smelter. We need to improve the animal agriculture. And we also need to work on some doors and stuff. So those are kind of my main base objectives. Now, the reason that I don't have a particularly long term plan is because bases can be transferred using deeds. So if I throw this deed to Jelly over here or Jelly version 4, then this little guy, he currently owns Scar's base. He, he is in possession of Scar's base. Then when I pick it back up, this base is now mine again. And here's the thing. I'm a pretty useless Minecraft player. I'm a pretty useless person in general. There's a high likelihood that I'm going to lose these at some point. Hopefully not actually lose them, like to the point where the paper despawns and then nobody owns Scar's base. But I imagine... I'm probably going to lose it to another member of the Hermitcraft server at some point in the near future. So with that out of the way, let's get to work on this thing. There's something about this base that just makes me want to do resource gathering time lapses. So this has worked out really well because now not only do we have a whole bunch of wood, but we also have a whole bunch of space to play with when it comes to actually constructing this thing. <laughs> not that wood, not the wood is something that I actually required. Uh, uh, what? What? Scar, what? Why do you have this much wood? Why do you have this much wood? Well, okay. The wood point aside, I mean, we have a bunch of space to play with. So these are all the different types of items that I think we should store in this gigantic new automatic sorting system. So we've got birch, spruce, oak, jungle, dark oak, acacia, quartz, sandstone, sand, gravel, grass, dirt, clear glass, and then all the different leaf types. From looking through all of Scar's chests, these seem to be the items that are most common and most require bulk storage. The only one that's not on there is terracotta because obviously I'd have to store all the different types of terracotta. So I'm just going to put a massive area at the end for miscellaneous items and Scar can use that for this. Or should I say I can use that for this? This is my base now, but that doesn't mean that I can't look after the little guy. I've got you. So first things first, we need to map out how big this thing is actually going to be. Now, as mentioned, I think in the previous episode, I'm going to center it up with this pathway right here. So in the future, we can kind of connect this path into this massive storage system. And as you can see, this first chest is fully centered on that build. So that means that we can now expand on either side. I'm just starting to realize how big this thing is actually going to be. <laughs> this is going to be quite the storage system. It really is going to be quite the storage system. You know, I've run the maths a little bit and inside this list, we've got 18 different types of items. And we have 22 separate storage silos here, which of course gives us plenty of space for all the different types of items. And then it gives us four storage silos at the end that are going to be for the miscellaneous items like terracotta and concrete. So that's two double chests, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I mean, 10 is the number that I had in mind for height. And it does look quite impressive, but I kind of want to go to 12. I don't know why. Yes. Absolutely, yes. One thing that I have just thought is we probably are going to have to increase the width because there's going to be certain types of items like dirt and sand that he will have more than 12 double chests for because Scar is a ridiculous human being. So we might need two modules for them. For example, the man has 15 double chests of quartz blocks. 15 double chests? What? I've never seen this much quartz in my entire life. What's he building? The Taj Mahal? I don't understand. I don't understand. I think we're actually going to have to increase our height and our width because frankly, this is just ridiculous. I've increased the height to 20 double chests and I approve. I very much approve. This looks utterly bonkers. You know your storage system's big when you can't actually fit it all in the frame? Like by the time I actually start walking back, those chests in that corner start disappearing. I mean, this is wild. This is truly wild. My only concern is that with this thing being here, obviously eventually I'll have to build a structure around it. And this is going to be an enormous structure. I mean, it's, is it wider than the gigantic hole? I mean, it's not far off. It's probably within like eight or nine blocks. And if you're building a structure around it, 
there is every likelihood that it is going to be as big as that. This is going to require an awful lot of glowstone, and glowstone is something that I don't have an awful lot of. And surprisingly, neither does Scar. That was a weird camera angle. Mining glowstone, mining glowstone, and mining glowstone. And now I've run out of glowstone, so I need even more glowstone. Except it turns out I mistook these redstone lamps for a piece of netherrack, which means I don't need to gather more glowstone, which has certainly elevated my mood. So, with all of our redstone lamps in place, this gives us a pretty good impression as to what this storage system is actually going to look like. And this is a bit of an issue, actually. The storage system is so big that I can't even view it from any meaningful distance because it all just disappears. It looks like I've done nothing all morning. I might send a screenshot to Scar from all the way back here just saying, what do you think of your new storage system? He'll be very confused. Mainly because this is my base, not his. Next up on our long to-do list is to install all of the hoppers in, which is used a ton of wood and also a ton of iron. But with those all in, we can now finally crack on with the actually interesting bit, which is getting all of the redstone in place. And to be honest with you, now that I'm thinking about it, this is also just going to be a massive bulk placement of components, isn't it? Like storage silos, they're not the most interesting of redstone circuits. This is just going to be pure numbers. I guess the clue is in the name. When you're building up a bulk storage system, you're going to be doing a lot of bulk redstone as well. I'm trying my best to make it look at least a little bit interesting by mixing up the colours, but then keeping them in the same colour palette as Scar's base here. So that means not only is this thing going to look cool from the front, it's also going to look cool from the back, and it's going to look cool when all of the chests disappear and you can see straight through it. These are the sorts of things that you have to think about when you're working on a build as cool as Scar's. Or should I say mine? I keep forgetting. Yes, and I can confirm that my idea has been a success. This actually already looks cool, but it is a little bit of a grind, so let's crack on with the time lapse. And I'm so glad that I decided to do it in the form of a time lapse because that was not the most exciting thing I've ever done in Minecraft, I can tell you that. That was a lot of comparators and a lot of repeaters, and although I love building redstone, I really do. You know, I love solving redstone problems, I love working on redstone circuits, that was neither of those things. You know, that was just like me 3D printing redstone circuits. I wasn't even thinking. I think I was like, I was fully reclined in my chair. You know, I basically wasn't even looking at the screen. I, I, I probably could have fallen asleep throughout that and continued constructing those towers. It was just one of those those bulk tasks that, that you occasionally have to do in, in, in the world of Minecraft and, and mi Minecraft building. You know, it's, it's something, I'm obviously, I'm not going to outsource it. I mean, as nice as that would be to have workers that work for me, and I come in and go, hey, I need, I, I need you to build this. I'm going to go for lunch, and then when I come back, it best be done. As cool as that would be, I feel like that kind of defeats the object of me actually working on the Hermitcraft episode, so I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. And I just have to get used to the fact that occasionally, I'm going to have to place thousands of comparators and thousands of repeaters. And I'm not complaining. It might sound like I'm complaining. I might have the tone of a complaint. But I'm not. I mean, how can I complain when this is the outcome? This, this is ridiculous. This is so nuts. It's actually, it, it is, it's daft. And it's, it's daft with a capital D and A and F and T. And maybe an exclamation point as well. I mean, if we just fly over to the other absolutely enormous parts of Scar's base, you would think it would be dwarfed. Okay, you would think it would be dwarfed. It's, it's unloaded. Give, give, give it a second to load back in. It kind of ruined the effect, didn't it? It really ruined the effect. I mean, yeah, it looks big. It does look really big. You know, the reveal isn't quite as good as I was expecting. All right, but yeah, it's huge. Absolutely huge. But the best part is it is actually going to serve a function and and it's actually going to store stuff. This is needed. This is actually needed. <laughs> it's just so silly. But of course, the job is not complete just yet. We've got all the storage in place, but we still need to add in the automatic sorters and basically all the things that are going to be transporting the items into the correct areas, so we got to work on that. But first, there's a little something that I really want to do. Hello Hermit, and welcome to the first race around the base. This event is very similar to Green Season 6 Elytra course, laid out are red rings to fly through, and on occasion an arrow block to point you to the next one ring. This is a race, however an easy one at that. The objective is to achieve the fastest time from start to end. Get the best time and win all the diamonds Hermit's paid to play. Practice run equals one diamond? Timed run equals one diamond block? What? I didn't realize I had to pay to do this. These are all the rules which I have just read through, I guess. I mean, this could be expensive, especially because, let's face it, I'm useless. There's no chance I'm actually going to win. But who knows? Maybe the underdog or underbird could fly here? Yeah. Because 
dogs don't fly, so I thought maybe I could do something, but that just ended up falling a bit flat, didn't it? A bit like what this underbird is going to do on the Elytra course. It's going to fall, fall flat. I should just stop talking, really, shouldn't I? All right, diamonds have been deposited. I, I've paid for three practice runs. I think that'll be enough for me. And there are 18 rings, so my first one is all going to be about just working out where those rings are. So that is ring number one. Then we have ring number two. Ring number three, four, five, six, seven. Ring number eight. Ring number nine. Ring number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, okay. I, I, I feel like I kind of need the. I, I know the course now. Now I feel like we should go for speed. I am definitely going to die doing this. I'm 100% going to die. Right. As the sun is setting, let's do this. Taking off. Okay. So we have got good speed through here. Oh, good change of direction there. This is this is actually gonna be a it's gonna be a speedy run. It feels like. Oh, that was that was fast. That was fast. This is the one that is gonna kill me. It actually did kill me though. <laughs> oh no! I kind of wasn't expecting to actually die. Oh, oh no! Uh, do I have? I'm really not prepared for this sort of situation. I came in way too hot on number seven. All I can hope is none of my stuff is just exploding out the wall. It looks like, though, I seem to actually have retained everything, which is fantastic. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it was going to kill me. Okay, I, I regret that. Although I have just realized this means this is the last to practice one. So I really have to make it count. This is where we're testing for speed. Okay, it is going well so far. Just keep your head. Just stay completely chilled. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's complicated. It is complicated. Okay, that would have been a disqualification. How are you not meant to land there? I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm not built for speed. Maybe I'm just not built for this sort of thing. Why is it that I can do all the other ones? But I just can't do this one. Did I miss a ring? No, no, this ring is down here. Other than that one room, I am, I am good. I am good, I could die here. No, I see, I'm, I'm good, all right? Other than that one bit. Oh my word, there's people doing it in 43 seconds. I mean, I, I timed that one. It was around about 49 seconds. I'm not even in the runnings, no. I mean, there's really not much point in me doing this, but there we go. One diamond has been submitted. Or should I say diamond block? The weather's looking good. It's midday. This is it. Okay, we are off to the races. My word. My word. My word. I mean, one has never traveled this fast. Oh, did you see that? I just need to make sure that I stay on top of my rockets. I don't get myself confused as to where I am because that's what I almost just did. Oh. <laughs> I'm feeling tense. I'm feeling incredibly tense. I, I think that was a suboptimal way of getting there. That was not bad though. That was not bad. I'm kind of curious as to what my time was. I've dragged it into Adobe Premiere Pro, and now here comes the moment of truth. All right, let's get my name up on there. We did it in 40, which is good. That's a very good start. 5.07. It's, uh, you know what? Wait, is that a bronze? Have I achieved a bronze? I've got a bronze. Nice. I am behind, I'm assuming, Corrales. And then Tango, I think Tango, yeah, Tango is in second place. And then there's there's little old me. There's little old me cruising in at 45.07. And genuinely, I think my main losses were my jump at the start was terrible. I wasted time there. And also my landing, I, I landed pretty much all the way over here. Like I, I, If I had stuck the landing and got my launch properly, I think I would have shaved about a second off, which would have put me in the running. Maybe we will come back to this. But for now... I've got a sorting system that I need to construct. I am really confused, though, as to how this got into my inventory. Does anyone know how this got into my inventory? <laughs> Anyone at all? 
It's the only thing that's in my inventory right now. Ethos slab aside, I'm trying my best to work out what the smartest way to configure this item sorter is. I really want to be able to slot it in between this gap, but I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it off. Just because, unfortunately, if this storage silo fills up, then it will power the hopper next to it. And that will stop this item sorter from working. With that being said, this little solution here seems to be okay. So I've raised up the hoppers a little bit and then these are the item filters right here. And you can see the redstone actually slots in between the silos, which I'd say looks pretty cool. But it looks nowhere near as cool as this little system right here, which is considerably smaller and a lot less clunky than this design. Look at this. Look, it fits within the footprint of our storage silo and it all seems to be working properly. I really don't know why I haven't thought of this before. It's also incredibly easy for me to build. I mean, if you look at this, so I do it a little bit like that and then I place in my comparator. That allows me to place in my blocks. Then I've got my redstone dust and there it is. I mean, that's all I need to do. I just need to repeat it another 20 or so times. Absolutely plain sailing. Here goes the final one. I have become pretty well versed in constructing these things now. That is it. We have got ourselves a whole bunch of sorters on top of our whole bunch of chests which are accompanied with a whole bunch of redstone lamps. And that is actually really satisfying when you fly in and they like load in that pattern. That looks super cool. So the next thing that I've been wondering about is how we're actually going to get items into this thing because you know, Scar is going to be loading enormous numbers of items into this thing at one time. And then importantly, if it overflows, we cannot have him losing shulker boxes and shulker boxes worth of items. So I've been sat twiddling my thumbs for about an hour on this one, and I'm still not 100% certain what to do. So I've decided to just start building and I hope that the idea that I've come up with is a good one and it is actually usable. So here's the plan, all right? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double chests that are regular input chests. So if Scar puts items, or if I put items, I keep forgetting that this is my base. If somebody puts items inside these chests, they're going to be picked up by the hoppers and they're going to make their way into this item elevator or future item elevator. Now this is all well and good, but if I want to clear out shulker boxes, I don't want to have to place down the shulker box and then fill up the chest. So we're going to have an automatic shulker box unloading system. Now this is designed by Samos the Sage and it should do the trick. So all of the items from the shulker box will make their way through this hopper and go into the hopper line and all of the empty shulker boxes will make their way into these chests down here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my big concern here is overflow protection. I want to make sure that no items can get lost through using this thing. I want to make sure that if you put tons of items into the input here and this thing overflows, I know it seems unlikely, but you've seen how many items are out there, then the system will automatically shut off. It won't allow any more items into the system and it will stop anything from being lost. Now I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a little bit. First thing that I have to do though, is I need to connect our item elevator into this gigantic hopper line thing here. And that of course is going to funnel all of our items into their respective storage silos. And I've got to say, I'm loving the way this thing is looking. I just, I think it looks so cool. I mean, I know I've said that it looks cool throughout the whole video, but this extra bit looks extra cool. And I'm actually going to see it in full for the first time, now complete with all of the half slabs and things and all the water and bits and bobs. Let's see, let's see, let's see. That looks nuts. Even without the chests, it looks insane. Then as the chests fill in, I mean, this is just, this is like a, this is a, a Minecraft childhood dream. You know, Minecraft wasn't around during my proper childhood, but if it was, this would be it. So the next stage is the overflow protection. And what I thought we could do is just take an output from the storage silo. When this thing starts to fill up, then we'll get an output through this redstone line right here, which will go down to the bottom and it will shut off our item elevator. So it will stop any more items coming out. Now that's obviously a pretty simple solution to the problem, but the best solutions to problems are often the simpler ones. And with all of that now fully installed and everything put in place, this thing is now done. Like this thing is now ready to go. It should be all completed. It should all be functional. So let's see, what items are we actually putting into this thing? So we've got all the different types of wood. We've got quartz, sandstone, sand, gravel, grass, dirt, clear, glass, and then all the different leaf types. Okay, now because Sky uses fewer different types of leaves than I was expecting, I thought I'd also throw stone and cobblestone into the mix because let's face it, that makes total sense. And of course, if Scar ever gets his base back, then he can mix this thing up as much as he likes. He can choose what items to sort inside the system 
and he can even change what items are being sorted depending on the project that he's working on. I hadn't thought of that while I was building it, but that would actually be... That would be incredibly, incredibly cool. So all of these ones with the comparators switched on, those are active item sorters. And then these ones at the end, these are all of the miscellaneous chests, which as I say, I'm hoping should be used for things like terracotta and concrete. We have got... Well, there's six modules, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means we've got 120 double chests of space for miscellaneous items, which might be enough. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. Just the finishing touches now. And I would say that this is a job well done. This is a job well done. I mean, it's one of those builds. I can't even fly up and admire it from afar because everything unloads. But if I just fly past it, I mean, that gives you a, a, a bit of a sense of scale. Look how long it takes for me to fly from one end to the other. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is daft. This is definitely, this is definitely top level daftness. But it's built for a base that is equally daft. I mean, look at this place. It is enormous on all scales. The chess monster is enormous on all scales. So I needed a sorting monster. This is the organized sorting monster. It's been a ton of fun building this thing. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll catch you in the next episode of Hermitcraft. See ya. Now to round things up today, I thought I would give you a bit of a housing update. You know, I'm getting my house renovated at this point in time, which is really messing with my schedules and things, but that is just the nature of the beast. You know, there's jackhammers, there's stuff going on, so I can't really record videos. That's just how it goes. But it's so cool watching it come together. I've posted some bits on Instagram. If you're interested, I'll check it out.